In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint Stormcast Eternals. You will not only learn how to paint the most notable of Storm hosts, the Hammers of Sigmar, and the Hallowed Knights, but you'll also learn all the skills and techniques needed to get any of the other Storm hosts painted as well. This is an easy to follow step by step guide showing you everything you need to know, so by the end of this tutorial, you will have the confidence and knowledge to get your own Stormcast painted. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and I want to show you in this video how you can approach painting your Stormcast Eternals for Age of Sigmar. The Stormcast Eternals were once mortal heroes, now reforged by the God King Sigmar to defend the mortal realms from the ruinations of chaos. The Stormcast are separated into storm hosts, each with their own history, heraldry and approach to battle, with each storm host represented by their unique colours and I want to show you how you can approach painting some of them. But before we get started, I do want to say a massive thank you to all my members and patrons who support Tabletop Ready and allow me to make content for you. You can also support the channel just by taking the time to like the video and also leaving me a comment. I love hearing about your own hobby. As well, all the paints and brushes I use will be shown on the screen as I use them and any other equipment you see me using will be listed in the description along with affiliate links to where you can get them. When it came to building my liberators, I chose to fully assemble them, but any shields I did leave separate to make painting a lot easier. And I made sure to also undercoat my liberators as well, and the colour I chose depends on what storm host I'm painting. Just choose what works best for you. If you need help getting your miniatures ready for painting, I do have a dedicated video on the channel showing you how. And now that we have our miniatures built and undercoated, we're now ready to get started. I want to start by showing you how to paint the two most notable storm hosts that you see most often, the Hammers of Sigmar and the Hallowed Knights. And the first thing we need to do is work on getting some of the base colours painted. If you're painting Hammers of Sigmar, then our base colour wants to be an equal mix of Retributor Armour and Yorick Armour Gold. If you're painting the esteemed Hallowed Knights, we're going to use an equal mix of Ironhand Steel and Runefang Steel. And for best results, we first want to thin our paints with an equal amount of water, given a small control. Then when you're ready, we also want to keep our brush moving and avoid going over anywhere we've already painted, to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And because we thinned our paint, it won't have covered very well. But don't worry, we just need to repeat the process and continue to build up our layers until we have a solid colour. Just be sure to let each layer completely dry first before doing another one. Now we've done that, we can get the other metallic base colours painted. When it comes to painting miniatures, we can't overlook the importance and the very basics of applying paint. So that's why we're going to start with getting all of our base colours down first, because this is a great place to warm up and practice, especially if you're new to painting or just looking to get better. For the Hammers of Sigma, we're going to paint their trim with Liberator Gold and their Scale Mail with Iron Hand Steel. When painting Hallowed Knights, the trim is painted Retributor Armour and the male Rune Lord Brass. Then any weapons are painted using Lead Belcher. If you're unsure of what colours to use and where to paint them, then we can use Reference, especially if we've not painted something before. Something else we want to do now, before creating any definition, is paint all the material under the armour, as well as the boots with the Bad and Black. We want to do this now because it's going to be messy and we can neat things up with our base colours after. With that done, we're now going to create some definition and finish working on our metals, which is going to be very similar to both our Hammers of Sigmar and Hallowed Knights. To create definition, we're first going to do an all over wash and this is going to help bring out all of our details and features making them easier to see. Let's start with right clean flesh shade straight from the pot and apply this anywhere we've painted gold and we want to use enough to cover these areas comfortably so we avoid pooling in areas we don't want it to. If you do see it pooling up too much, then we can use our brush to remove any excess we don't want. When that's fully dry, we can use Norn Oil on the areas and details we've painted silver and brass. And after everything is completely dried, you should see how our washes have helped to bring out features and details, but we will need to brighten and tidy things back up again. Using washes can be a great way to create definition, but they can also be really messy and dull and darken any colour we use them over. For the Hammers of Sigmar, we use an Yorick Armour Gold 
to tidy up our armor and then liberate a gold for the trim. And when tidying things up, we need to be careful not to cover up any definition we created using our wash. If you're painting Hallowed Knights, we want to use Runefang Steel for the armor, Retributor armor for their trim, and Rune Lord Brass to brighten that scaled mail back up. Something else we can do to make more of an impact is to darken our recessed areas or add a color tint making things more interesting. Anywhere we have gold, we can use right flesh shade and apply this directly to areas like where armor plates meet and around rivets. For our Hallowed Knight armor, which tends to have a blue tint, we can do the same with Drakenhof Nightshade, but also applying this on some of the flat areas to add some colour. Now all that's left to do for our gold and silver armor is to highlight them, and there's a lot to highlight so let's start off with a dry brush. Using Stormhost Silver, work the paint into the bristles first, then remove as much of that paint as you can. So when we rapidly move our brush over our miniature, the paint is only going to be deposited over the more raised areas and details. Build this up slowly and try not to overdo it. If you see areas you couldn't get with the dry brush, we can go in and paint lines of Stormhouse Silver on these edges and details we missed. And when you're done with the highlights, before we move on to the next section, let's quickly finish our black material under the armour. First use an Eschen Grey to paint any raised details and edges. After this we can use Dawnstone to really bring out the detail even more. With the Hammers of Sigmar and Hallowed Knight's armour done, I now want to show you how to approach painting Stormcast armour if it wasn't metal. In this section of the tutorial, I want to show you how we can paint, glaze and highlight armour if you wanted it a non-metal colour. I am going to be showing you how to paint a Celestial Vindicator for this, but the steps and techniques that I'm going to show you can be used to paint any colour of armour, you just need to change the paints that are used. Again, we need to decide what colour we want to paint our armour. For this Celestial Vindicator, I'm going to use an equal mix of Sotek Green and Sons of Horus Green. Remember to thin your paint and use multiple thin layers for best results when painting. I now want to show you how we can make our armour more interesting with a glaze. We use a Luprocal Green, and to make this a glaze we want to thin it down more than we normally would with twice the amount of water, making it more transparent. Then when you're ready, we want to apply a glaze and even thin layers, allowing any colours underneath to come through. And we can build up the colour with multiple layers, just make sure to let each layer dry first. As well, we can use a glaze of the colour we're working from to smooth things out even more. This glaze is done on the larger, flatter areas and anywhere else we think would look good. And once you're happy with how everything looks, we can create our definition doing a recess shade using Luprocal Green again, thin normally this time, applying this into those recesses and around details. This lets us bring out those details without affecting our colours like an overall wash would. Now we have our definition and made our armour more interesting, we're ready to talk about highlighting and the different kinds of highlights we can do. When highlighting, use a brush you vibe with and we want to thin our paint like we normally would and remove excess paint from our brush to prevent those thick blobby lines. Our first highlight is going to be a chunky highlight using Sotek Green and this wants to be quite a thick line painted along edges and on raised details. This highlight will start to bring out the shapes of the armour. Next is going to be a line highlight using Temple Guard Blue and this is used to bring out details and edges even more. To make this easier we can angle our brush and run it along any edges to create the highlight. If you can't do this then we're going to need to take our time and paint thin lines where we want those highlights to be. For me highlighting is one of the most important techniques to practice. Not only does it help to improve the look of our miniatures but it also helps to improve our brush control and hand-eye coordination. After your line highlights we're going to use Baharoth Blue to paint a finer highlight helping to bring out some of our edges even more. And finally we can use Blue Horror for a spot highlight painting little dots on all of the corners to really bring out our details. To finish any armour, we can paint little scuffs and scratches, and for our Celestial Vindicator, I'm using Temple Guard Blue. Now we know how to add interest, create definition, and highlight using different kinds of highlights. Now we're able to use this to paint other areas and details of our Stormcast. To paint the Celestial Vindicator's white pauldrons, we can start with a base colour of Korax White. 
then correct definition with the Bane Blade Brown Glaze and Recess Shade. After that we can keep it simple with a line highlight using White Scar. And we can then work on our metallic details which we already know how to do. There's still plenty of other details we need to get painted on our Stormcast, so let's now see how we can get them painted as well in our next section. Let's use this section to work on finishing our Hammers of Sigmar and Hallowed Knights, and we can see how to paint a lot of the shared details of the Stormcast Eternals as well. The first thing we're going to get painted is the blue armour of the pauldrons and shields, starting with Cantor Blue for our base colour. We can add interest on any flat areas with the Night Lord's Blue Glaze, and Night Lord's Blue can be used for our recess shade as well. When you're ready to highlight, start with Calador Sky for our chunky highlight around the edges, then Techless Blue for the edge highlights. Lothurn Blue to emphasise more prominent edges, and then Blue Horror for any spot highlights. If you want to get fancier with your armour, we can create some volumetric highlights on the more curved areas of the armour where line highlights wouldn't really work. This is done turning our highlight colours into glazes and working up to the lightest colour in the centre. Scratches can be painted using techless blue. I know what I'm showing you is a lot, but I'm just trying to show you what's possible and you can keep things simple, just do what you feel comfortable doing. The pauldron icons and any lightning bolt designs can be painted using Corax white, with some apothecary white contrast used to create definition. When that's dried we can get any edges highlighted using white scar. If you have any scrolls or parchment on your Stormcast, we can start with more gas bone. Create definition first with an all over wash of Zerif and Sapia, then we can use Rhinox Hide and the recessed glyphs to make them stand out more. We can now lighten and tidy everything up with the use Shabti Bone Glaze. Finish any scroll and parchment with an edge highlight of Pallid Witch Flesh. Something else you'll have to paint on any Stormcast are those weapon handles, and to paint these let's start with Mephiston Red. Let's bring out any details with some Norn Oil, finishing with an edge highlight using Wild Rider Red. The last detail I want to show you how to paint is any leather straps, and we're using Rhinox Hide for our base colour. Let's then paint a chunky highlight using Doomball Brown, and then we can finish any leather and straps with Gorthor Brown for our edge highlights. Alternatively, we can do black leather using Etching Grey and Dawnstone to highlight. With everything I've shown you so far in this video, you should have no problem getting your Stormcast painted. But there are still a few things that I do want to show you how to do that I'm going to cover in the last section of this tutorial. In this final section, I want to show you an alternative way of painting your armour as well as how to paint a cool glow effect on their weapons. I've already shown you how to paint your armour in a few different ways, but let me show you another way we can approach painting our armour. We first want to start with the metallic undercoat, and I would also paint a base colour over this of the matching colour, so here I'm using Retributor Armour over a Retributor Armour spray. This gives us a stronger colour and lets us cover any areas we missed with the spray. After this, depending on the storm host you're painting, we can use a contrast paint. Here I'm using Flesh Terrors Red for Astral Templars and apply this over the armour to give us a coloured metallic finish. This is because contrast paints are more like ink so we can take advantage of their transparency and at the same time creating our definition. I did apply this a second time to give us a richer colour. When the contrast is dried, rather than doing an edge highlight, we can use some Stormhouse Silver to paint chips, scuffs and scratches to add our interest and to bring out the details. This is a great way to paint your Stormcast armour, as it's a lot quicker to do and it gives us a different look and feel, especially if you wanted a different look to your army. Something else we can do to make our Stormcast stand out more is to add a glow effect to their weapons. For this we're starting with Sotek Green and we can paint this around the edges of details as well as in the recesses to help give us that glow. After that, let's use some Baharoth Blue just in the recesses this time. And the last thing I want to show you is how to paint the little gems you see everywhere. For our base colour, we're using Galvor Back Red, highlighting the edges with Fire Dragon Bright, 
finally painting a dot of Towler Okra on the point of the gem. I'm a huge fan of the Stormcast miniatures and we can paint them in so many different ways. And now hopefully you're able to go away and paint yours however you want, including some of the more well-known Stormhost colour schemes. So let's see how they turned out. Before we see the reveal, I do want to say a massive thank you to Muppet, Ash, Romaine and Less Than Phil, who have recently become supporters or has donated to Tabletop Ready. Thank you so much. And if you want to become a supporter, which not only helps me create this content, it also gives you access to our Discord, along with access to lots of other perks for as little as £2 a month. And for every tier, you'll get tutorials early and be kept up to date with what I'm up to behind the scenes. Our Stormcast are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and get your own painted. Make sure to go and check out all the other content that's available on the Tabletop Ready channel as well if you want to learn more about painting miniatures. I really love making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. If you do then please let me know by leaving a like and making a comment. As well make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.